our fathers worshipped on this mountain and you Jews say that in Jerusalem in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship you know how some people have a prayer altar right you know some people have a spot in their room or in their house where that is the place they must worship God how many people have heard, heard about that before where you have a corner you have a seat you have a cupboard you have a room prayer room well done no? <laughs> prayer room and there's nothing wrong with it just that you will see what is wrong with it now and if you do it it's not like you're going to hell it's just that you don't understand what I'm going to teach you now so if, I, if you understand this if you are like that you will stop that and you will know that you can pray anywhere and God will answer you and the room should be in your heart not in a place all right our fathers worshipped on this mountain and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship now you know there are some place of worship you go to if you are not worshipping in their place of worship you are not a Christian you are going to hell it's this something similar so there was a contest for where is where are we supposed to really worship God so verse 21 the scripture says Jesus said to her woman believe me the hour is coming Remember, when Jesus was on earth, the Holy Ghost hadn't come yet. So at that time, it was still okay. A little bit. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me. You know, now these people run to the, you know, if they want to seek God's face, they go to the mountain. And I don't have a problem with it. If you want to do that, that's great. That's wonderful. If you want to just exclude yourself from everybody else and just seek the face of God, that's wonderful. But he says, Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming. When you would need her on this mountain not in Jerusalem worship the Father you wouldn't have to go to a specific place you wouldn't have to have a specific shrine now you that you have a specific room in your house what's different between you and the guy that has a shrine I mean you would say well I'm calling the name of the almighty God wonderful and that's, that's a good difference let's keep going and then but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. I want to start from here because I used this two Sundays ago. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. So, the criteria to worship God is no more in a place, in a good, nice room, or in, or in anywhere special to you that you think God is. He says He requires you to now worship Him in spirit and in truth. And some people are confused, again, of what spirit and truth is. So I think when it says worship him in spirit and in truth, or worship him in spirit, it means just keep quiet, focus inside your mind. That means you're worshiping him in spirit. But we're not really here to talk about spirit today. We're talking, talking about truth today. The Father is in spirit, is a spirit, and we're worshiping him what? In spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Why did he say truth here? I know I explained the other one the last time. The Father is a spirit and he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. That means there's something, there's a, there's a relationship between truth and spirit, right? But that's not what we're talking about today now. There is something here that I want us to see. That's what I brought it up today to continue here. It says the Father, to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So what is the truth? We have explained so far that truth is God and truth is what he says. That means say you should worship him in the knowledge of him do you know there are a lot of Christians that just go to church and worship God without knowing the God they are worshipping praise the Lord Hallelujah. you know before Jesus came brought the Holy Ghost to teach us the scriptures do you know that the children of Israel they were following God like Babiola I, 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 want to, I want to pass this message very well I want to make sure everybody gets it do you know that the children of Israel were following Whatever prophet that was there for them, they were following them blindly. They didn't really know what's up. How many people here have ever spoken to like an Islamic person, a Muslim person before? I have, that's why I use that one. It might be any other people. Have you ever spoken to them and tried to hear, like have, have them preach to you, ask them questions? Nobody has done that here. Okay, so thank you. So I have, right? I, I met this guy in Brooklyn. He was really convincing me to become a Muslim. 
And I started asking him questions. I started asking him a lot of questions. And guess what this guy said? After I asked him like three questions or two, he said, well, I don't really know much. How can you not know much? I'm trying to convince me to come and join you. He said, I don't really know much, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you our, I forgot what he called his name, Ustad or something. I'm going to give you his number and I'm going to give him your number so that he can now teach you, tell you this, give you an answer. So my point is this. Until the Holy Ghost came, everyone was following that way. It was whatever the teacher said, whatever the prophet said. That was it. Is somebody coming along? There's something I'm, I'm, I'm unveiling even to myself right now. Before Jesus came and sent the Holy Ghost after he left, everyone was following the prophet or their leader blindly. It was whatever the leader said. So nobody was able to defend whatever they were believing unless the leader. And that was why, if they just said, it's time to go and fight the other religion, everybody would just follow like, like zombie, and go and fight. Because there was no provision to understand. But Jesus brought something. The Holy Ghost brought something different. That's why we are different now. Way, 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 way different. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That means you're not just going to come and worship God and just bow your head one million times, five times a day without really knowing who you are worshipping. It's time now to worship God in truth, in the knowledge of who God is. And you know how to know who God is, right? By studying and by attending lectures, teachings, preachings, services, and by fellowship. That's how you know who God is. <laughs>